Where's my coffee? Oh, there. Oh my gosh, I just said that on camera. What a diva moment. Okay, moving on. Hi, everybody. My name is Mr. Francie, and welcome or welcome back to Mr. Francie Reads. Today, we are in the beginning stages of the month of May, my birthday month, and the beginning of my reading uh, challenge that I am doing, the Mix It Up May challenge. So I'm very excited to get onto that. But of course, the beginning of one month, signals the closing of another, and that means that it is time for my monthly wrap. Before we get into it, allow me once again to say welcome or welcome back to Mr. Francie Reads! <music> Yes, hello and welcome, or welcome back to Mr. Francie Reads. My name is Mr. Francie and I'm honoured to have your company once again today as I talk to you about all the books that I read in the month of April. Can you believe, you guys, that we are so close to getting halfway through the year? I certainly can't. Where has the time gone? Oh well, that's not what we're here to talk about. We are going to start off with what I know you guys love seeing, my stats. So let's put them up on the screen in 3, 2, 1, go. For the month of April, I read a total of 10 books, comprising of 4 cosy mysteries, 2 classics, 1 dystopian, 1 paranormal, 1 fantasy, and 1 romance. To my age groups, I read three YA, six adult, and one middle grade. To my lengths, I read one tome and a half, one tome, one three-quarter tome, and seven half tomes, totaling 3,756 pages. To my star ratings, I had one five-star, five four-stars, and four three-stars, which means that all in all, it wasn't that bad a month. I mean, having all those four stars is still pretty good. But of course there was a standout, and we'll get to that soon enough. But first, let's talk about DNFing and something similar to DNFing, shelving. So we're going to start off with DNFing. I DNFed two books in the month of April, and honestly, I am not at all upset with myself for doing so. I mean, I wouldn't be anyway, but in this particular occasion, I am really not upset with myself because they were school books. So <laughs> these were books that I started to read uh, for school because I needed to do assignments on them, but fortunately I was able to get away with doing the assignments by literally just skimming to the parts I wanted. I DNFed them because I really did not like them, and and both of them for different reasons. So let's go through this very, very, very quickly. The first one was this book, Medea by Euripides. Unfortunately, it just did not work for me, so I DNF'd it. The second book that I DNF'd was this book, Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. There is a whole lot of racism that goes on, uh, and um, a lot of uh, like bigotry and stuff like that, and I just did not appreciate that. The next book I want to talk to you about is a book that I ended up shelving, and some of you are going to be really sad about this. I was too, but there was a good reason, and that is A Tale of Magic by Chris Colfer. So this is a middle grade fantasy book that Chris Colfer from the famous TV show Glee uh, ended up writing. He wrote a series uh, set in this world. After about a chapter, I decided to shelve it, and here's why. It was the third chunker of a book. Like, I mean, someone was telling me, me in my Discord chat, maybe we should call a tome a weapon, because of just how massive it is. <laughs> so... There you go, big chunker, big doorstop, big weapon, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, <laughs> of a book that I was reading in a row, and I loved chapter one so much that I decided to shelve it and give it the proper respect it deserves. So this book wasn't DNF'd, it's just being shelved. So now let's talk about the books that I did read this month, and the first book that I read this month was this book, which is Midnight Snacks Are Murder by Libby Klein. This is book number two in the Poppy McCann Alistair series. It is an adult uh, cozy mystery, and I gave this book 
four stars. Before I go any further, I just want to make the point that unfortunately with monthly wraps, I don't have a whole lot of time to talk about all the books that I read in great depth and detail. However, if you would like to see me go into more depth and detail, you certainly can do that by checking out my reading vlogs. I spend a whole lot more time on them there, so don't worry, you can get your fill just by watching the reading vlogs. This is just a quick snippet. All right, so the basic premise of this book is that we're once again following Poppy McAllister and her aunt Ginny. Now, at the beginning of the book, there is a snack bandit on the loose. Yes, that's right. There is someone in the area that Poppy and her Aunt Ginny live in who is breaking into homes, and rather than stealing TVs or um, jewellery or anything like that, they're literally breaking into homes, stealing snacks, and then breaking into more homes and stealing more snacks, which I just thought was really funny. Unfortunately, however... Poppy ends up uh, meeting this guy who works at like a teen drop-in centre helping all these youths. He ends up dying and the police connect uh, the snack bandit to being the murderer. And the snack bandit is someone Poppy knows. That motivates Poppy to uh, become an amateur sleuth once again and figure out who the actual murderer was. I love this book so much more than book one. Book one really did let me down. I gave this book four stars because it was just really hilarious. I was laughing so much in this book. I highly recommend reading it if you want a good chuckle. Look out for my favourite characters, the old biddies. <laughs> they are hilarious. Four stars from me. The next book I read was this book, which is Maurice by E.M. Forster. This is an adult classic book, and I gave this book 3.5 stars. So the basic premise of this book is that we are following a uh, man whose name is Maurice through uh, certain periods of his life. He starts off as a child, and by the end of the book, he's a fully grown adult. But he does uh, work out later on in life that he is gay, and he's living in a time where there can be absolutely nothing worse than being gay. Uh, in fact, it is kind of almost suggested in this book that it is much uh, worse to be gay gay and much better to be a serial killer. I had some issues with this book. The first part, the first half of the book was really jumpy. Like we had little moments here and there and we just jump ahead so many years in the future and it just felt quite jarring for me. But the second half did slow down and allowed me to spend more time with Maurice going through his day-to-day -day life, which allowed me to invest in him a lot more and I appreciated him a lot more as a character by that point. I end up giving this book 3.5 stars and yeah, I think that's absolutely what it was worth for me. I think three stars is the average and it deserved just over the average rating because of the poor first half, but the second half was really, really good. The next book that I read was this book, Murder at Pirate's Cove by Josh Lanyon. This is an adult cozy mystery, and I gave this book three stars. So, the two interesting things about this book. The first thing is that we're following the perspective of a male, which is definitely not common in cozies. The second interesting thing about this book is that this male that we follow, whose name is Ellery, just so happens to be gay. So we follow Ellery, who has been uh, bequeathed a bookstore, and this bookstore has kind of been run into the ground business-wise, and he really doesn't know how he's going to make it a success. One day he ends up going into his bookstore and he finds a dead body there and obviously he becomes the number one suspect. He gets to know the head detective and uh, he ends up having a crush on the head detective. I thought that the cozy side was actually pretty good. Having this book set in a town called Pirate's Cove was a lot of fun because a lot of the citizens of Pirate's Cove, they dress up in pirate outfits and do the whole, ah, matey, and all this, even though they're acting, which is so much fun. Everyone knows it's an act and they just get into it, which is so cool. Well, let me down was the mystery side. I got over the mystery really, really quickly, but the cozy side I really did love, and the way that it ended really set us up for book two. Book two is on my May TBR, and if things keep going the way that they ended in this book, then I think I'm going to have an amazing book on my hands. So the next book that I read was The Selection by Kiera Cass. So this is a YA dystopian book. I walked away giving it five stars. The basic premise of this book is that we're following a girl by the name of America Singer who is entered into a lottery and all the women that are drawn out of that lottery will take part in a bachelor, the bachelor like TV show situation but set at the royal castle. There is a tyrannical class system that has been set up 
And this class system, including those who are class list, not part of a class, are really against it. And we have rebels that are trying to, well, take over the throne, basically. I love this book. We're going to do a chat on, on it uh, on my Discord coming up really soon. And uh, we're going to be reading book number two in uh, May. So if you want to join us or catch up and join us, then please feel free to. Link to in the space below. So the next book that I read was this book, Breaking Dawn by Stephanie Meyer. This is book number four in the Twilight Saga series. Because this is book number four in the saga, there's really not a lot I can say without giving spoilers. So I'll just stick to my thoughts and feelings. Initially, when I did my reread of it in April, I walked away from this book uh, really upset with the final climax. But after a period of time, and you can go back and watch my reading vlog because I go into more detail about it there, I sat on it, thought about it, reflected upon it, and decided that really, I actually did love the final climax. So I decided to upgrade my original 4.5 star rating to give this book 5 stars. So my stats are actually incorrect. <laughs> I have two 5 star books and this is the second one. I loved my read of this uh, Twilight Saga series so much, you guys. I, I know a lot of people out there have issues with Stephanie Meyer's writing and Stephanie Meyer's world building, but not me. I'm a massive, massive fan, and I highly recommend the series, especially if you like vampire stories. I just thought it was, ah, oh, fantastic. Five stars from me. The next book that I read was this book, Heroes of Olympus, The Mark of Athena by Rick Riordan. And uh, to quote what I wrote on my Goodreads as the heading for my review, Thank you for the good times, Mr. Riordan, but sadly, we must now part. Yes, unfortunately, that is the case for me. Okay, I can't tell you much about this book because it is the third book in the series. Instead, I'll give you a very quick Mr. Francy story time. In March of 2020, I read book one in this series, Heroes of Olympus, The Lost Hero. I loved it. It was amazing. Then it took me over a year to pick up book number two, really was excited to get into it, and then in book number two we follow a whole different bunch of characters, and that really, really, really upset me. In book number three, this one, that the characters I love were going to be back in it, so I was really, really, really excited. By the time I got to the three-quarter mark, I knew me and this series were done. So I just find that each book in the series, they kind of have the same sort of idea. It's very... uh episodic, very formulaic. Yeah, it's just, the series is just not for me anymore. I gave this book three stars. The next book that I read was a book that was not originally on my TBR, but because I did shelve uh, the A Tale of Magic by Chris Colfer, I decided to pick up a short book and what better idea is there when you need to read a short book than to pick up, of course, a cozy mystery. I'll put it right there and it is called On What Grounds. So this is an adult cozy mystery book, and I gave this book four stars. So the premise of this book is that we're following a woman by the name of Claire Cozy. I mean, <laughs> is it cozy or cozy? But either way, I mean... <laughs> Anyway, she runs this uh, coffee house. While uh, Claire is at, at work one morning, she arrives to find out that the um, assistant manager unconscious. So Claire needs to find out who the heck actually made her go unconscious because, hey, Claire is going to be number, one of the number one suspects because she works in the place where the murder happened. I really enjoyed this first book. To read a book that is literally set in a coffee that uh, talks about coffee the way that this does was fantastic. You guys, I cannot say this enough. I love when a cozy mystery has a subgenre that the author really delves into in a passionate way. The subgenre for this cozy mystery series is coffee. And oh my gosh, the best way to store your coffee, the best way to brew your coffee to make sure it doesn't get burnt and has the best quality. And oh my gosh, it was, it gave me all the feels. I absolutely loved it. Four stars from me. So the next book that I picked up helped me to cross off my second uh, series on my sass list, the first one being The Twilight Saga, and that was the second book in the Betrayed series by Kiara Cass, which was this book, The Betrothed by Kiara Cass. So this is a YA romance slash fantasy. So I loved The Betrothed, which is book number one, which is an incredibly unpopular opinion. It centers around a woman by the name of Hollis who ends up being 
betrothed to marry the king, oh, sorry, the prince who's going to become a king, and she doesn't want to. She wants nothing to do with this whole situation. She doesn't want to marry him. She doesn't like him. She doesn't want to be queen. She does not care. But her parents are forcing her into it because they will come into a whole lot of money and great status if she does. One day, the king and Hollis are in training, are entertaining a family who are seeking asylum, and Hollis ends up instantly falling for the, um, the boy, the guy, the teen guy <laughs> that's part of the family, and her dream is to run off with him, which she ends up doing. And there's not a lot else I can say, because I'll be spoiling book one for those who haven't read it. But anyway, things ensue... Uh, at, at, towards in the book that uh, become extremely chaotic for Hollis. And so going into book two, I was really intrigued to see how things would go. Also, because book one did not do so well, Kira Cass ended up making this series into a duology, just two books, and I can tell having read this second book. The first half of this book reads as though it was intended to be a series. The second half of the book is really jarring because I felt like suddenly Kiera Cass went from la-di-da, let's write a nice second book in the series to, oh my goodness, I need to wrap this up and I've only got half a book to do so. I love this book though. Aside from the really jaggering, whiplashing second half, I gave it four stars. All right, guys. So now it is time for me to talk about my favorite female author. However... I might be giving you a rating that you don't expect. The next book that I read in the month of April was this book, Matchmaking Can Be Murder, by my all-time favourite female author, Amanda Flower. This is the first book in the Amish Matchmaking series, and it kind of works alongside the Amish Candy Shop series as like a sister series. We follow Millie, who is an Amish character. The reason I bring this up in case you haven't read Amish uh, Candy Shop is because we follow Bailey King in this series, who is in Amish country, but she's not Amish. She is what the Amish call an Englisher, a non-Amish person. In this book, we follow Millie, who is Amish. Millie goes over to see her uh, niece, whose name is Edith, because Edith is borrowing her goats, who you see on the cover, Peter and Paul. We love them. While she's there... Uh, she discovers that something's wrong with Edith, and what's wrong with Edith is that sh there has been a murder. The guy that she was meant to marry, whose name is Zeke, is now dead, and so we have to try and find out who the heck killed Zeke. It is called the Amish Matchmaking series, and so I went into this book expecting some matchmaking to occur, and it really didn't which annoyed me. I guess I shouldn't go in with too many presumptive ideas, but my thought was that we would have Millie sitting behind a desk, interviewing clients, and trying to work out who to set them up with, and that didn't happen in this book. Bottom line, I love the book for Lois, I hope that we get more matchmaking in the future, and I gave this book three stars. So the final book that I picked up in the month of April was this beautiful edition of Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. This is an adult classic book, and I gave this book 4.5 stars. I call all of my classics adult books. I just do because of the writing style. It was written a long time ago. So we're following, well, we're following a lot of characters, <laughs> uh, but it's omniscient narration. So this book stars uh, Peter Pan, the titular character, as well as Wendy... Jonathan and Michael Darling. And the book opens up with the three kids living at home with their mother and their father. Um, Peter Pan is known as the boy who won't ever grow up, and one day he ends up visiting, well, he ends up going to the Darling house because he loses his shadow. Wendy wakes up, and they get to know each other, and then Peter Pan takes Wendy and her brothers off to Neverland, where they get to experience quite a number of adventures. I love this book. The narration, the way it's written, is so warm and comfortable, like a nice little hug. I recommend this book if you haven't read it before, even if you've seen the Disney film. Honestly, the book is better, in my opinion, so I highly recommend it. And now for everyone's favourite game that we like to call up, 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 These are most of the books that I read in the month of April. What books did you read in the month of April? Be sure to let me know in the comments section below. But in the meantime, that is where I am going to leave it, letting you guys go with peace, blessings, and so, so, so much love. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I'll see you again soon. 
Mwah. Be kind, love one another, and spread that sparkling energy all across the world. And until next time, happy reading!